Hey there, Sam. If you hang around in the web development world for a while now, there's a high chance that you have seen the word MVC before, which stands for Model View Controller. But what is MVC anyway? In short, MVC is a software architecture or software pattern that helps us to organize our code and write more robust apps. You can pretty much think of writing a software as building a skyscraper. It wouldn't make much sense if we were to build a 100 stories high skyscraper without any sort of design or architecture, right? What I can tell you is, if you were to build a skyscraper without any sort of framework or design, your building will not last very long. You might even have difficulties completing the project. And this is the same as writing a software. We need a framework and predefined standards to work on any serious programming project. And MVC is one of the most popular software architecture available to us in the modern programming world, especially in web development. Modern frameworks like Laravel, Express.js, and Ruby on Rails are all adopters of MVC. Now here's a question. What if we don't use any framework or architecture when writing our code? The answer is simple. You're going to spend hours and hours digging through thousands of lines of code, looking for whatever you want, whether it is fixing a bug or implementing a new feature. Life is already hard, and we don't have to do that to ourselves. So here's the thing. Building a software based on an architecture can really help us to organize our code. Every piece of code or functionality has a place to belong. So if there's a bug, we will know exactly where to look without going through thousand lines of code. And this has a huge implication, especially in a team environment. Since everyone in a team would understand the software architecture that we're using, we can cut down the time explaining the code to one another. All right, that's enough talking. Let's dive into the concepts of MVC. Let's start with M, the model. Models are basically entities that hold data. In other words, anything that we can collect data on are considered as model. For example, if we are writing an e-commerce app, a user could be our model because we can collect name, email, password from a user. An order can also be considered as another model because we'll need to collect data like the order date, the items ordered, which user made the order, and other information associated in an order. We could also have a product model which contains the product name, the supplier details, the selling price and cost, and etc. And again, models are just entities that can collect data. If you worked with SQL database before, each model in our app should have their own table. In a typical MVC app, we usually define our model through an ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapping. To simplify, an ORM is basically a set of helper functions that allow us to easily interact with the database. So database records are essentially text records that stored inside our computer. If we were to work with this text record as it is, it is pretty difficult because every time when we retrieve this text record, we somehow have to pass them into a workable programming object. So we can easily create, read, update, or delete the records. An ORM was invented for this sole reason, to easily let us interact with database records. As the name suggests, we would map the relational records into programming object. Okay, now that we've got our model, we need a place to display all this data. And that's exactly where view comes into the picture. Views are graphical pages that display our models. And just like its name, it's literally viewing the data. You can think of view as HTML pages in our app. Views are usually handled by templating engine. A templating engine is essentially an enhanced version of HTML. It allows us to populate our model data into HTML using placeholders, so we can easily create dynamic pages. Now the C stands for controllers. Controllers are what I call the gatekeeper of our app. What I mean by that is they control what comes in and what goes out from our app. And controllers are responsible to connect everything in our app together. And this is exactly the location on where we put our main business logic in. They receive a HTTP request, do something about it, and send back a HTTP response. Other than model, view, and controller, there are actually other components in MVC. Let's go through them one by one. First of all, we have the router. In a typical MVC app, there'll be a lot of routes that do different things. And each of these routes will have a dedicated controller assigned to it. For example, if we visited the login page of an app, we will expect the login form to show up rather than the landing page, right? And that's exactly the responsibility of a router. The router makes sure the incoming HTTP request is redirected to the correct controller. 
A request that asks for the landing page will be redirected to the landing page controller, which then sends back a HTTP response that contains the landing page HTML. And the same applies when the user visited the login page, the registration page, the about page, so on and so forth. The next component is called the middleware. It has a very scary name, but it's actually very simple. Middleware is just a set of functions that runs before the HTTP request hits the router. Now at this point, you might be asking, why do we need to run functions before the request hits the router? Middleware can be extremely powerful if we use it correctly. Here's a few real-world scenario where middleware is used extensively. Suppose we are running a social media platform, and a user tries to access a member-only area without logging in. To stop people from accessing content without logging in, we can create a middleware to kick out an authenticated user. So basically, we'll create a middleware, in other words, a function that checks whether the user is logged in or not before the user visited the members on the area. If the user is logged in, we'll let the request passes to the router and then redirects the user to the corresponding controller that shows the members on the area. If the user is not logged in, however, we'll kick the user out to the home page and prompt them to log in. And now, here's another example on how middleware can help us to protect our app. Now suppose there's a malicious user that tries to attack our server by sending HTTP requests a million times per minute in an attempt to overload our server. To prevent this from happening, we can create a middleware to log the request IP address against a counter. Every time a request is received from the same IP address, we'll increase the counter by one. And if the counter goes over a certain threshold, let's say 60 times per minute, then we could ban this IP address from our server, preventing them from accessing any content in our app. And those are two examples on why middleware can be very, very useful. Middleware can be used to improve the security of our app and also bootstrap incoming requests so we can use them more easily. The last MVC component that I want to introduce to you is called services. In short, services are miscellaneous code that runs alongside with the controller. It can be any type of features that we want to include in our app. For example, we may want to have a mailing service that sends email upon a new account registration. To achieve that, we'll create a new service that takes care of all the complicated logic to send an email. We could also have an SMS service to send our SMS to our customer whenever an order is placed. And that is a brief intro to the core components in a typical MVC app. Let's visualize this to make this more concrete. So suppose this is our browser. And on the right hand side is our server environment. The browser sends a HTTP request to our server. And once the request has reached the server, the first thing you'll go through is the middleware. And again, middleware is just a set of functions that runs before the request hits the router. In our case here, if the request is where the user tries to log in, we could have a middleware that checks whether the user IP address is currently in the banned list or another middleware that checks if the user has already logged in or not. Once all the middleware has passed without any issue, the request will then move on to the router, and the router will redirect the request to the correct controller, which in our case here could be the login controller that handles the login logic. And now in the controller, we'll need to validate if the user has sent in the correct credentials or not. In other words, we need to compare the credentials that the user sent in against our record in the database. To do that, we'll need to use the ORM to retrieve our user model. And once the model record is retrieved, we'll then compare the credentials back inside the controller. If the credentials are matched for security reason, we might want to send an email to the user to notify there's a new login attempt. To do that, we'll call our mailing service that will send out a notification through email. Once that's done, the controller will then load the members area view and send it back to the browser as a HTTP response. And that is the overall structure of an MVC app. Depending on the web framework, there could be a slight variation in the MVC components, but the overall structure will be similar. Key takeaway for this lesson, models are entities that hold data. It can be anything that we can collect data on. For example, user, product, supplier, transactions, and so on. Views are pages in our app that display data. So in the context of a web app, every page is considered as a view. Controller controls what comes in and what goes out from the app. Controllers contain the main logic of our app and they are responsible to perform operations requested by the user. The router redirects incoming HTTP request to the correct controller. The middleware is just a set of functions that runs before the request hits the router.
and services are miscellaneous features in our app. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.